This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. What we're going to go through and do now is just briefly look at that concept of the ex-div market value. In the previous videos, we, we told you not to worry about it. Uh, the exam, you will need to worry about it and, and, and make sure that you can demonstrate the difference and you know what the difference is between a share price that is ex-div and a share price that is, is come div. So it, it's very simple. Uh, if you think about the price of a share, uh, let's just say it starts the year at $1. And we're anticipating that we will receive a dividend of 10 cents at the end of the year. Then what should happen in theory is that that dividend will grow from $1 up to the $1.10. And then when that dividend is then paid, when the share price is $1.10, we have to make an adjustment to the share price. It, it will happen on the market because if we've got a share price at $1.10 that $1.10 incorporates the value of the dividend that we expect doesn't it now if the company then pays out that dividend what I now have is a 10 cent dividend in one hand and the share in the other don't I now if the share price stayed at $1.10 then I'd have a $1.10 share price a 10 cent dividend which means I'm wealthy to the tune of $1.20. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an additional 10 cents has appeared. So what has to happen is that when that dividend is declared and we receive it as an investor, the share price was $1.10. So it has to drop by the value of the dividend. So here it was $1.10. The dividend was 10 cents. So it has dropped now to $1.00. So that what we have is a 10 cent dividend on one hand and a share that is worth $1. And I still have exactly the same amount of wealth, $1.10. All that's different now is that I have a physical 10 cent dividend and a $1 share. Now, if that share price did not fall, then we would be too wealthy, if you like, because we'd have miracled out of nowhere an additional 10 cents. So what we've got is to think about it with terminology. So the first bit that you've got there is thinking about the ex-div share price. The ex-div share price, the key bit to note there is that is the price immediately after the dividend has been paid. So based on the example that we were talking about there, that was our $1, wasn't it? Because the share price was $1.10 and then the dividend of 10 cents was declared and it dropped down to one dollar okay the second thing that you need to be careful of is the come div price and the come div price is that immediately before the dividend is paid so here using our brief example that we chatted about that's there isn't it at one dollar ten okay so we can formulize that if you so like uh, the come div price which we know was one dollar ten wasn't it that's equal to the X div price, which is a dollar. And also we need to add in the dividend that has just been paid, which is there as 10 cents. So what you're going to have to be careful of within the exam is that you look at what share price you are given. If you're given the cum div price, you will need to adjust it for the X div price because it is the X div price that goes into our cost of equity formula. Remember, the cost of equity is D naught 1 plus G divided by P naught X div. So if you're given the cum div, you will need to adjust it to work out the X div price to put in the formula. Have a go at the next example, see how you get on, and then we'll chat our way through it. Best of luck. So to make sure that we understand the difference between cum div and X div share price, let's go through together and work the example Cohen if you haven't done so already. So what we've got, again, requirement wants us to go through there and calculate the cost of equity. So it wants us to work out KE. And the issue that you've got here straight away is that the share price that you're given of $4.15 is the cum div share price. Now you do just need to be careful. Here it's quite clear that it is the cum div share price. Sometimes questions won't specifically tell you that it is cum div. What you need to be able to do is spot that it is cum div 
based upon what they give you with regards to the information on the dividend. Because here it says we are due to pay a dividend. So therefore, that share price incorporates the dividend because the dividend has yet to be paid. So it could just say Cohen has a share price of $4.15 and is due to pay out a dividend of 35 cents. If it says due to pay out a dividend, then that means that, that it is come due. Okay. Uh, but here it does categorically say that it is come due. Uh, it says there that we have a dividend, is it there, of 35 cents per share. So that is D0. And again, what you have there is a growth rate, isn't it, of 5% which is there as 0 0.05. Uh, the most important thing that you've got uh, is to ensure that you convert, is it that $4.15 cum div to the X div share price. So what you have there is that you would take the $4.15 being the cum div price and you will go through there and deduct the dividend. Is it there of 35 cents? And that gives you there is that $3.80 as the X div share price. So given that you've got the X div share price, given that you've got the growth rate, given that you've got D0, why don't you stop the video, have a go, work it through, see how you get on, and then restart the video. Okay, so have a go and see how you get on. Chris, just stop the video there. That would be great because what I'm going to do there is that okay excellent and we'll restart it now so how did you get on ladies and gentlemen did you get an answer around 17.2 percent no good because that's entirely the wrong answer i think the answer is about 14.7 percent because what you should be expecting to get there is that ke was our dividend, which remember, you need to make sure is in dollars if we are taking the share price on the bottom to also be in dollars, isn't it? That's vitally, vitally important. Leave the dividend in cents, but make sure that you also put the share price in cents. Remember, the share price is that extra value we mentioned just before. Uh, add on the growth rate is that there of 0 0.05, so 1 plus 0 0.05, and then we add on G at the end. Again, multiplying that on your calculator uh, gives you, is it 0 0.14667, which to you and I is 14.67%. To two decimal places. Okay, so there you have it. The key issue now that you need to spot in a question is whether the share price is cum div or whether it is x div. If you can negotiate that, then you shouldn't have too many problems come the exam.